Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. I'm trying this on a new app. Um, it's Kinemaster, Cinemaster, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. It's spelled with a K. Um, so let's see how this goes. This should be a fairly short Friday Reads and I really mean that this time. Um, tomorrow, today, sorry, I'm filming this Thursday. Uh, it's May 1st, so that's my birthday month. And I had planned originally on only reading books that I really wanted to read for May. Uh, I have to finish most of the book two prize books first, however, though, which um, not that I won't enjoy them, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily pick them as being enjoyable subject matters, let's say that. So um, without further ado, I will just jump right in. So uh, last Saturday, I participated in Dewey's Readathon, where you theoretically read for 24 hours. For me, it starts at 7 a.m. Saturday to 7 a.m. Sunday. I read almost 14 hours exactly. I finished eight books, all of them except for one, I think under 200 pages. And I read about 1,400 pages. And two of those 14 hours were in audiobook. So about 12 hours spent actually reading physical books and then two with the audiobook. Um, outside of that, I just didn't really read much the last week. I'm finding it hard to concentrate, and I don't know if that's just quarantine life or what, but I finished one book two prize book, which I can't talk about, but that was on audio, and um, I enjoyed it. And then the other, other book I finished was an ebook, thanks to uh, <laughs> some insomnia, and that is Victoria Cottage by D.E. Stevenson. This is the start of a trilogy of books set in the small English town of Ashbury. This book follows Caroline Daring, who is a young widow. She has three children, one son, Robert, who is in Malaya or Burma, which is sort of funny to have two books back to back about Burma, um, serving in the um, Royal Forces. And then she has two daughters, one who seems to be, I think, 10 or 11, the other 16, 17. Um, Caroline lives in this small Victoria cottage in Ashbury. There is a new man in town who is displaced from London. This book was written and published in 1948, 1949, somewhere there, so post-war years. Um, so this person, who I think his name is also Robert, oh no, James is the son, got it. And the new man in town is Robert. Um, you come to find out that Robert is living in Ashbury at the pub because his house was bombed in London in the Blitz and he lost his wife and children. So he's trying to start over, meets Caroline, and they hit it off. But Caroline's younger sister, who is a semi-famous actress in London, comes to stay at Victoria Cottage with them and Caroline thinks she sees a spark there, a spark there between the, Robert and her sister, so she kind of backs off. And um, her oldest daughter, Lita, who is really a snob, and I wanted to smack her a lot of the time, she gets engaged to a local landowner's son. Um, it seems to be not what anyone really wants except for the young couple themselves, so would you think they'll stay together or not? You know, uh, the youngest daughter seems to just be a foil to everyone else. She's kind of knows some stuff, but you don't really see too much of her. Her son, James, comes home as a surprise from Burma, and he falls in love with the local landowner's daughter. So it's this family, their relationships with each other and potential romantic relationships in town. It's about life after the war and rebuilding. It's about just simple things in life. Um, I mean, there are some misunderstandings, but it's not the usual comic over the top, like, oh my gosh, just get to it. It was just enjoyable. Not a ton happens, but I really liked it. It was just soothing. I could come back to it when I felt like it and no pressure. There was no urge to get back like, oh my gosh, I have to see what happens with Lita and her stupid fiance, Derek. You know, there's none of that. I just, it was just nice and enjoyable. This is the first of D.E. Stevenson's books that I've read. Um, I have 
the whole Miss Bunkles book series. I believe I have all of Mrs. Tim and the Regiment series. I have a few other ones as well in physical copy. I know that some of them are being reprinted by Furrowed Middlebrow, which is such a great name. <laughs> um, so the, I think the editions I have are from Source Books that came out five, six, seven years ago or so. Uh, but at any rate, this book, I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. I knocked it down a half of a star because there are two instances where they use really racist language and it is absolutely out of nowhere and it totally shocked me. Not that there's ever any place for the n-word or anything like that. I mean, I, I get that. However, it was so apropos of nothing at all and it made me go, oh my god, out loud both times. It was just, mm. so it, I knocked it a half a point for that. So a heads up about that. Um, but this was just nice and lovely and easy to read, very soothing. I think a lot of her books are like that from what I have seen online for quick reviews and things I've read about her. I think she wrote something like over 50 novels and some poetry as well. So I'll be coming back to her very shortly, probably. So this is the only one I finished that I didn't already talk about or that I can't talk about. So just this little one. Coming into the house this week, I have two books. This first one, Finding Fraser by Casey Dyer. This is this was from Paperback Swap, so it was free <laughs> for me. Uh, this follows a young lady on the cusp of 30. She's sick of all these terrible relationships, so she decides to go to Scotland to try and find her own Jamie Fraser from Outlander. And honestly, girl, same. Um, so it's, you know, she takes sells everything she owns, goes to Scotland, and then ends up, I'm assuming, finding herself, maybe love to along the way, I'm assuming she will, but, you know, I don't know. It should be easy and fun to read, and anything to do with Outlander, I am here for. And the only other book that came in, I was I had to order because my library didn't have a copy. My library did open last week, and I got some DVDs and a few books checked out from them. They had just had um, drop-off. Like they, you call ahead, you request what you want, you pick a time, they bring it out to a table. When they go back in the building, you can get out of your car and get it. So I don't care <laughs> whatever I got it. But they didn't have a copy of this book. And this is one of our um, books coming up for the Bitches Book Club that I'm in with my friend Jenna and her sister Michelle. Hey, girls. Uh, this is the address book. What Street Addresses Reveal About Identity, Race, Wealth, and Power by Deirdre Mask. I did see one other person do a review of this. This is a brand new book nonfiction, of course, and they raved about it. And this is very much the kind of thing that I like to read, these small, potentially nerdy, unusual little uh, micro histories. Is that the right word for it? But I don't know, this should be really good. So this came in too. So for what I'm reading now, I'm still trying to finish up Ruby. I'm still trying to finish up a whole bunch of stuff. I have my David Rose sweatshirt on and a different one. Um, I did start this book on my e-reader after I finished Victoria Cottage looking for something similar. So I found this book and I read about 40% of it. I'm really liking it. And then last night when I couldn't sleep, I realized I had a copy of it. So here it is. <laughs> it's The Way Things Are by E.M. Delafield. I don't know if I like it just because I like this writing. I like the time period. Again, it's England and the country. Um, I'm not sure when this was printed. I can find out. Let me look. Super Laura. But it's the main character's name is Laura. You don't see Lauras in books. You see some Laurels or Laurens or Lorries occasionally, but never really any Lauras. So that was a delightful surprise. This was first published in 1927. So it follows Laura and her husband and their two young sons in their country house. They don't really have any money. They have problems with keeping staff and um, well, problems with money and food and things. So it's about Laura's interior life and exterior life and how she, Laura was 34 and she wonders how she got this way. She wonders how her life ended up like this in every single aspect because she didn't used to be so boring or middle class or whatever and then her younger sister comes to visit with her latest boyfriend and the two of them seem to have a little bit of a spark and it's just talking um but it's bringing some light into laura's life 
So I'm really enjoying it. This is my first Della Field. I have several others by her. I'm going to start this um, Diary of a Provincial Lady series very soon. So I'm liking it. And I, I think that I'll just keep to reading it in bed at night because it's not super stressful and I can just go to sleep easier, theoretically. So for the music for this week, I have a track off of Golden Spa Tones by Dean Evanson and Walter Makachan, I believe is how you pronounce it. So this is uh, bells, big Tibetan singing bowls, flutes of different kinds, and ocean in the background. There's always ocean surf. So the uh, track I picked, I believe, is number three called Infinite Ocean. It's about five minutes long, and you can just chill and listen to it. Of course, like a lot of these New Age CDs, it says don't drive, you know. You could go into a heightened state, don't drive when you're listening to this. I don't think anyone's listening to YouTube driving, unless there's some kind of new wave thing that the kids are doing out know about, which is extremely possible. <laughs> but um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this track. So how are you all doing? How have you been? I Did you have a nice week? I haven't been on YouTube really except to check to upload a video on Tuesday. I haven't looked at anything. I apologize. I am very far behind. So what are you reading? Have you read any of these books? And I say that really meaning book that I finished, but um, let me know your thoughts and check in how you are. I hope this new way of filming works out and I will check in with you guys very soon. Bye.